people, although we're, I think we're all rather different and we have rather different ways of playing. But that's part of the challenge, I think, is making that work and uh, it adds a certain uh, tension and exciting elements to, to rehearsal. Certainly we have a lot of fun and, uh, and performances too. <laughs> particularly in this format, it's repertoire that isn't played very often. It's quite varied, it's not particularly well known, which is a, a pity, and that's uh, one of the things that we'd like to change. From the Baroque period, you can do trio sonatas like uh, Bach and Handel and Telemann, and uh, that's quite nice with piano and modern instruments. And then we've got a bit of classical. Haydn is probably um, the earliest we go for originally written pieces. Um, so the Haydn trios are our staple diet, if you like. <laughs> some Weber and Czerny, um, which is, as you might expect, with lots of running around and, and spectacular things. We have mostly 20th century pieces, though, that are, have really broadened the repertoire. Pieces like uh, the trio by William Alwyn. Martineau, uh, Liebermann, um, even uh, the sort of jazz-based things like the Kapustin trio. We like pieces that have a balance between all three players. And I think it's important that we have something with a conversation between everybody. Thank you. 
and more and more things are being written and I think we in the long term would be looking to commission pieces too. So we have a wide range of, of uh, styles and periods and of course as an ensemble we can add to that by doing duos and solos. excited by trying new sounds, new repertoire. I've always loved playing with cello. It is challenging from a balance point of view, certainly. Um, I think playing for a cellist, uh, just cello and piano, then I would tend to work uh, more, in very basic terms, I'd, I'd produce more in my right hand than my left, and working with flute and piano, then it would probably be the other way around. So initially I found it quite difficult to to find a balance that allowed both instruments to come through. So it's about finding uh, something that's quite open in sound and clean um, so that the, the textures can keep coming through. Uh, and obviously if the piano has something important then that comes through too. But the, the important thing is to be transparent enough to be able to allow the other instruments to sing. Working with string players I find easier than working with wind players because the colours tend to complement each other more. I think with vibrato and in terms of the dynamics, I think Julian has a lovely thick sound so it's, I find that easier to work with. With the instruments there's a technical differences, um, observing the breath control of the, the flautist. That's no good if you plough through a moment forgetting that the flautist needs to take a breath, or taking a tempo that slowly that the flautist falls off the chair because she's not able to breathe. Um, matching one's articulation to the articulation of the piano, dynamics, and it's wonderful playing with, with Lisa and Paul in the sense that they're fantastic musicians and we complement each other's playing and musical ideas. and are experienced in coaching and, and teaching individuals so it's fun to be able to add that for a course or as part of an engagement. So for example we could do uh, workshops and masterclasses through the day and then a, a recital in the evening. We have busy individual um, lives as performers and teachers. Um, we do do workshops and masterclasses. In fact Lisa and I have recently done a, a workshop at Wells Cathedral School. We've got a new venture at Benslow and we're actually doing workshops for chamber music in this combination. So it's really exciting to be able to work with these instruments individually, but that they're going to try some of the repertoire that we know.
Oh, dark secrets. Can I just think of them and you tape that? Well, I don't think there are any dark secrets. Uh, well, there's, there's Lisa's addiction to coffee and chocolate. That's, that's a constant. Paul likes to work with his hair, I think, a lot. He's very protective of his hair. I think Paul is worried about his hair sometimes. He likes it very pristine, whereas Lisa doesn't. And uh, I think for Julian... I, I think that's it. I have no dark secrets. And then there's Julian's eyebrows, I'm afraid. It's a bit of an issue. Um, it's his way of commenting on what's going on in the trio, so uh, we have quite a lot of communication going on between us while we're in concert. Things that have gone wrong or things that have gone particularly well, things that we've rehearsed, his eyebrows usually give the game away. I love these guys, it's fine, I love them. <laughs>